Hey Tigers, welcome to your digital reteach session for changes in genetic traits. In this digital reteach, we'll cover Texas Essential Knowledge and Skill 7.11c. In this TEK, it is your job to identify some changes in genetic traits that have occurred over several generations through natural selection and selective breeding, such as the Galapagos medium ground finch and other domestic animals. It's important that you understand how you're going to get credit for doing this digital reteach. First thing you need to do is make sure you use the Cornell note worksheet that you got from your teacher while you watch this video. Take notes, answer the questions, and then write your summary to the essential question. Show your completed Cornell note worksheet to your teacher. They will then give you information about the next opportunity to take the new test. As we discussed this particular TEK, it's important that you have a little bit of vocabulary knowledge. The first one we want to look at is just what would be considered a genetic trait. This would be a distinguishing characteristic of any organism. Uh, for humans, this could be different things that you might have looked at for different humans compared to other humans. Things like some humans have freckles, some do not. The color of your eyes. Even things like a detached and attached earlobe are things that would be traits of a human being. What we'll reference a lot will be the bird, the finch, and how even though it's the same species of bird, from one location to another, you will see drastically different beaks. Those are all considered genetic traits. When we start talking about adaptation, this is going to be an inherited trait that will increase an organism's chance of surviving, and if they survive, that gives them the chance to live long enough to reproduce in their particular environment and then we should see more creatures with those traits. If you use this example of an owl, you've got things like very large eyes. This is a huge advantage for the owl. An owl that hunts at night needs to take whatever light that it can to see its prey. Those large eyes are going to help take that little bit of light and make it that much better at hunting. Even the talons that it has to perch itself up on a tree could be considered an adaption that is helping them survive. And because that creature has those characteristics and those traits, we should see future owls of future generations that carry on those traits. The idea of natural selection is kind of a big process idea. So natural selection is going to be a process. And in this process, organisms with the variations that will help them survive will live longer and they will compete better and then they will be able to reproduce more often than those that do not have that variation. A little classic example of a cartoon on the right side here is you've got this bird that's eating the beetles. And the beetles are what we want to look for for natural selection here. If we look at this, for whatever reason, the birds only are eating the green beetles. This means that the green beetles are going to have a very hard time living long enough to reproduce. So as the next generation goes by, we start to see less and less green beetles. Given enough time, what we'll notice is mostly just orange beetles left over. These orange beetles survive natural selection. Nature has selected them by having the trait that they need to go on and reproduce and pass along those traits. If we get into the idea of selective breeding, this is where human beings intervene. So in selective breeding, the selection and breeding of an organism that has desired traits that we want. If it was an animal, this could be something as simple as a turkey for Thanksgiving. If you look at this family tree, you'll see that they mated turkeys that were much larger intentionally, and over time we should see the next generation of bird continue to be larger and larger. And as they keep doing that one generation to the next, they select the breeding and they get a turkey at the end that's much larger than if it just would have been by nature. In your notes section, there's a spot for identifying some adaptations. So in the first example, we'll show you the classic tree frog. Looking at this picture, I want you to write down something special about this tree frog, some adaptation that is gonna give it an advantage, some characteristic that makes him special. Please pause the video and take some time to write this. Our second example will be a plant. Now for all of these vocabulary words in this entire section, this applies to plants and animals. So we shouldn't forget about the plants as well. So here we've got a particular type of cactus. 
just like before, pause the video and look at this picture and take a look and write down some items that you see that are characteristics that are adaptation that helps this plant survive. All right, as we move on, you'll hear a lot about the Galapagos Islands and hopefully you spent a lot of time on this in class. We don't need to spend much time here, we just need the basic idea. So when you hear the Galapagos Islands and why this is so special, it's just a location that Charles Darwin visited when he was sailing around the world. What is very notable about this is that the Galapagos Islands have many little tiny islands that make up the archipelago of islands. What Darwin did was very simple. He took tons of notes, drew many pictures, and even collected many samples of different species. As he was looking over those notes, what he found was from one island to the next, he saw the same type of finch, but what was unique was on different islands, those finches would have different beaks. And what he started to hypothesize was that there had to be some reason for this. And his thought was that due to the nature of the island, some islands had kind of a desert environment, others had kind of a tropical environment, depending on what food was available, drastically seemed to have some sort of a link to what type of beak the finches had. And that's the big discovery there. Before this, scientists didn't really understand the idea about creatures having a trait that was favorable and that that changing future generations. Here we start to see it makes sense. Now, if we tie everything together, this is a sample star question that would kind of lead you to understand what's going on here. So a few years ago, they actually asked this question. So it says, when Charles Darwin visited the Galapagos Islands in the 1800s, he observed many types of organisms that were similar, but lived on different islands. The four species of mockingbirds found on the Galapagos Island are shown below. Each species lives on a different island. So here's a classic example that doesn't have to be the finches, but mockingbirds will do just fine. So these species are very similar, but the hood mockingbird has a longer beak than the other three species. Which of the following best explains the difference? All right, so if you look in your notes, you've got a spot for A, B, C, and D. You need to circle where, whether it's correct or incorrect and then back up your reasoning. Let me help you with the first couple. If we look at answer choice A, that says the hood mockingbird needs a longer beak for defense against predators. All right, while that might be true, all the birds would have predators. So we would not expect any beaks to be different in that case. However, there are beaks that are different, so this must not be the reason. So answer choice A is incorrect. It doesn't make sense for this scenario. If we look at answer choice B, the hood mockingbird originated from a different type of bird than the other species. This is also incorrect. The whole idea of adaptations is to see the changes in the same species from one generation to the next. If we start looking at different species, then we aren't even talking about adaptations. You're just studying two different creatures. All right, keep thinking the same way. You know A and B is not correct, so you're down to C and D. So pick the ones correct, pick the ones incorrect, and then write a brief reason why. When you finish that, don't forget your summary. You have a summary question as part of the essential question that still needs to be answered before you finish. Once you finish with that, you'll be all done with your digital reteach.